Okay, so removing or replacing a background on an image. Now you may have a photo something like this which you may want to use as maybe stock or maybe you just want to clear up the background and drop something else in to make it a nicer photograph and maybe straighten the piano, things like that. So there's a, probably a few ways of doing this but I'm going to show you one of the ways that I use and first of all I kind of decide what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to crop along here so the photo is going to be kind of like that. I want to just crop as close at the bottom here to, to get rid of this mess here and obviously give myself a little less work but then what I'm going to do is just outline the chair under the body on the outside of the piano come along here I'm probably going to lose the speakers and clone those out and then keep the frame all the way around and then round this side and then down the chair there so we're going to lose all of the background all of the floor so we're just going to leave ourselves maybe a, a plain white background to be able to drop anything else in so the way I, st I would start off basically is just to crop it how I want first of all so we say take the crop tool and we just crop it down to about there I think that'll do for now make sure it's the same either side of the piano because it's going to be white it doesn't matter how close we get because we can add more white in so if we go to about there and crop I'm not worried about the aspect ratio at the moment because again I can add more white at the top or something so that's okay at the moment then what I'm going to do is now start selecting the whole of this area. Now there's various ways of doing that. You can either uh, use something like the polygon lasso tool or the magnetic lasso tool or if you've got steady hands the lasso tool. But the way I do it, the way I find it a lot easier is to use the pen tool and select the paths option up here. So once you've got that you can actually zoom in as close as you like. I use the scroll wheel to, to go in and then just start at the point down here off the screen and then click your points where you want to create the selection all the way around so you don't have to work at 100% I normally go in I'm currently at 278.39% but you can go in as close as you like obviously to make it easier for you just to make sure you get it really accurate around the outside so I'm going to keep going around here just to get this first bit done make sure I stay pretty close as close as I can to the edge so that when we obviously get rid of the background all we're left with is the wood of the chair we don't want any of the other colours from behind coming in so go down to there and we're going to go across the cushion here and I think in this photo there's pretty much straight edges it's not too bad in fact let's go right along to here just to get rid of that bit I'm just going to have a quick look at the photo because we're going to have some there's not really any problem areas because the hairs obviously within the piano we've got no worries about actually getting that in the background so I think all the edges are pretty straight so what I'm going to do is carry on doing this zoom right in carry on going around this and come back to you when I've actually got all the edges selected okay you can see there that we've gone all the way around the chair around the keyboard and then I've got I've split straight through the speaker there right across I've done the outside of this and I've split through the book because I'm going to get rid of that as well and also through this speaker back round, back round the bottom of the chair and then it's gone all the way around back to here and now if you if I zoom in to show you the closing point we've actually got to the edge there as my last point and then as I hover over the last point here a circle appears on the on the pen tool so as I click that all of the circles disappear and we've now got just a straight line so it's actually difficult to see where you've gone um, but what you can now do is just right click and make selection and I'm going to use a feather radius just, just one pixel because I want it to be quite sharp so if I click OK you can now see I've got the running ants all the way around the area that I want to delete so if I now select my background color and make sure it's pure white which it is select OK and then press delete on my keyboard and use background color you can actually pick other colors if the, the white is already there and black and gray if you wanted them if you've got CS5 or above you've got content aware but I'm just going to use the background color click OK and there you can see straight away we've got rid of all of that background and we've got pretty sharp edges around the outside there there's little bits where I'm going to need to do a bit of work but generally that looks pretty good if I look at 100% by doing Control alt 0 it goes to 100% and you can see we've got pretty clean edges now all I've got to do is do the same within here and get rid of the rest of the book and make that white now I'm going to try and get that as close to the hair as possible and also just little bits just there and one bit there just to make sure I've got it all correct and that bit just there just so that the um, 
the chest everything stands out pure white so I'm going to do that and come back to you in a second I'm just going to pause the video and I'll see you in a bit okay you can now see that I've got the other areas selected there's a bit under the chair here under the arm just under the keyboard there and then the whole of this so that all of that took me around 10 to 15 minutes to, to do so if I now press delete background color we've now got rid of all of those background bits obviously we've got these bits here and this bit along here and I think we've got the obviously the speakers that need to go so really just to get the the background pure white took around 15 minutes by using the paths tool very quick and effective and simple so all I'm going to do now is select the clone tool and select a reasonable brush uh, brush size I'm going to use a feathered edge so the hardness is zero and reasonable brush size like that and then select a part of the edge here and then go along and make sure that it's dead straight in fact it's dead center about there and then just start cloning let's see if I've got that right I may have not, yeah, I'm slightly out so if I go back by control alt and zero uh, sorry control shift and Z takes you forward and control alt Z takes you back so we're there make sure that's all right yeah so now I've got to just make sure this cloning goes along perfectly straight in fact I'm actually going to use a slightly harder edge so I can see the edge a bit clearer here so when I do this and hover it over you can see it's a bit sharper so it allows me to actually line it up a bit better I think I've gone a bit over the top there as well you have to be exact on this because of the lines let's try and keep that there we go I think that's about right so if I just take that along if it doesn't meet up exactly you can always fake it a bit at the end that's near enough so that's okay to there I'll get rid of all those shadows and just make it look as natural as possible now as soon as I get close to the edge there I'm gonna switch the tool to a smaller one so if I now just bring the size down a bit zoom in and then just go along just being careful not to go too close to the edge so if we just go along like this again it needs to look as natural as possible when we zoom back out to show that hopefully it looks like there was a, never a speaker there at all just get rid of that shadow so you can see there now the speaker's pretty much gone so I'm going to quickly do the other side okay so that's that side done as well we've got rid of the speakers now there's a little bit on the chair down here I'm just going to get rid of and that's fairly straightforward I'm going to use a smaller brush and take the hardness down again and just follow these lines down make sure it looks natural so you don't just do one clone space here you keep taking different clone areas just to keep it going to try and keep the lines going in the natural direction so it looks fairly natural when we zoom out this should look okay so keep that going down in fact let's come back too many jaggies there and that one down so you keep taking selected areas from different parts of the wood to make it look as though all the grain is actually flowing in the same direction so it keeps it natural looking then just do the edge and when we zoom out you can see that looks fine so we've got rid of that bit as well we've also got the bit along here where we need to just simply because it's a straight line it's fairly straightforward take your selection bring it along cross cross bring all this all the way across oh we've done it that's okay um, yep that's not bad at all actually it's gone right up to the edge so we've got it right that time and if we zoom out to 100% control alt zero that looks pretty good um, we can tidy it up a little bit more we can take this edge flip it and put it into there and in fact let's show you how to do that if we take this selection here see if this does work and then layer via copy I can actually drag that over by holding control when I've got the uh, the marquee if I press control it brings up the, the the selection there and I can then control and T and then just flip it over and it may well just fit in there just to get a more natural looking edge let's have a look at that it's not too bad if I control T again I can actually make that touch smaller until it fits in and looks perfect and then we're just going to flatten that layer flatten 
take the clone tool again and just smooth up the edges. The reason I've done that is because I wanted to keep the um, the the light curving around here, so it keeps that looking more natural. Okay, and just bring that over. So now if we go Control Alt Zero, you can see we've got the curve of the light going round. Um, I can just kind of clean up that a little bit. I'm a bit of a, of a perfectionist, so I like the lines to be perfect. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we've we've put that back in fine now. So now I need to do the same with this and bring this along. Um, just fairly straightforward job until we get to the hair. But I'm just going to make sure I can actually do this bit. So if we just bring the top edge along first to the hair, and then I'm just going to skim around the hair like that. There's a bit of a bluish cast there, but if we go as close as we can. Now remember, I'm zoomed in at 280% here, so when you zoom out, it's it's not going to show as much. So if I do Control Alt Zero at that point, it still looks pretty natural. Do the same along here. Okay, that looks okay. Pretty much got rid of that. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. All these bits have gone. I've got rid of the white under there. So now what we're left with is a pure white background with the piano cut out. Um, so I hope that bit helps with regards to getting rid of the background. It's simply using the paths tool and then cleaning up with the uh, the clone brush afterwards. But if we now wanted to drop something in the background, we can actually select either go to select and color range and sample colors and highlights. That would select all the highlights, but it's going to select parts of the the body and the keyboard as well. So one of the easiest ways to do because we've got all those white backgrounds is to take the um, the magic wand tool here. And then while holding down, I think it's duh, 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 shift. Yeah, so select your first area of white and that will select everything around the outside. And then you hold down shift and it will add other selections. So we'll select that in there as well. Zoom in and select that little area as well. And even these tiny little bits here. And we've got the tolerance set quite low. In fact, let's set it lower. Let's set it to two. So that will mean it won't allow any sort of differences, any tolerances. It will go as close as it can to the edge of whatever you're selecting. So let's do that and click in there. Want as much of the white as possible. And in there. It's going to be quite difficult to get a lot of this in. Let's just try this. And we've got under there and there. And I think we've got everything but the side there. A tiny bit there. Possibly that bit. I'm going to choose a background now, a photo to drop into the back of there. What have we got there? Okay, so we've got most of the background selected. I'm going to pause the video, look for a photo that we're going to drop in, and then we're going to show you how to replace the background just for a bit of fun. Right, so here we are. I've picked a, just a shot from a wedding I shot last year. Um, now to drop this into the background, we've already got the edges selected here. Now just before I start, what I will say is that I actually set the feather on this. I did it again, set the feather to 13 and that allowed me to get a lot closer into all of these white edges. So I've actually got a better selection there. So I used feather of 18, but of 13, but just, just test that so that when you click with the magic wand tool, you make sure that you get as close to the edges as possible. So currently I've got all the white edges selected there. Everything white is selected. Um, so I know that anything I drop in the background is going to replace the white. So I take the photo here and I either click and drag with the marquee tool around the outside to select it or simply press Control A and then I can press Control C to copy or just go into edit copy there and copy it. Go back to this photo and then I have to go to edit paste special or you'll see in uh, previous versions to CS5 that it just has paste into. So if we go there, paste into or Alt Shift Control and V and that will paste the photo into the background where the white is. Now if I select the selection tool there I can drag the photo in the background to where I want it to be. So let's just have the couple at the top there listening to the lovely piano playing by my son as they stand outside. Now obviously this is very silly, it's just the first photo I picked. So we know now we've got the background in. So if I just select the mark, uh, the selection tool, we've now got a layer there. So if we go into layers, we can see that we've got both both layers there. So really, you can either flatten that or keep it as a layer if you want to play with it later. I'm, I'm just going to flatten it to make this bit easier. What I've done in the past to create a stock shot, and it does take a bit of time, is to just use a very small tool with minimal hardness. 
and then just literally clone that away just go around all the edges until let's do it from the black so that just gets rid of it's very difficult let's choose a, a much harder tool smaller and then just basically try and get rid of that white line around the outside as much as you can um, like I said it's taken me a while in the past but I've created shots where they've sold quite well as stock so we need to get rid of that corner anyway because it was out so if I just do this very quickly I know it's a bit a bit of a picky way of doing things but once you've done it you'll end up with very very clean edges and quite a good looking kind of shot now as I said this is just for fun this one so it's just I'm doing it fairly roughly but once it's done if you wanted to do this for a stock shot or something you can actually spend a bit of time on it and you'll end up with quite good edges let's just go to about there show what it's like when it's zoomed out I think you're getting the idea it can be kind of quite hard work but it's worth it in the end if we come out you can see that corner now we've got rid of all the white edges and just do down here um, when you see a lot of photos online stock photos or whatever they haven't just been done very quickly a lot of photos that are kind of specialist will have taken quite a long time to actually do you need to be a bit of an artist to get some of these particular things done gone too far in there so let's just go in and just kill the white liner along the outside making sure that the, the edge stays straight if we zoom out you can see there go to 100% you can see the edges got very clean so if you were to do that all the way around you'd end up with really clean good looking shot so I hope that helps I'm not going to do all of it now because it'll take forever but you can see there very silly but that's one way of removing a white uh, removing a background creating a pure white background and then obviously dropping something in the back in the uh, in place of the white so be good if you could have a go at that have a play and if you wanted to upload some shots to our gallery to show your your handiwork then obviously join the gallery and uh, look forward to seeing some of the work but I hope that helps and we'll see you on the next video